Hey there friends, I'm Leo, and after two long months I am finally back and I have a new devlog with a bunch of new stuff. So much so that I don't think I'll be able to show every single small thing that I made, but I will be going over the main things that I did. Such as making all of the foraging systems, like cutting down wood, or mining down mine nodes, or just gathering stuff on the map, as well as interacting with the grass and all of these things. I am also working really hard on the Patreon content. Now for just $1 a month you will get tutorials on how to make the mechanics in my game. My plan is to make one new tutorial every single week, teaching the mechanics I made for the game in Unreal Engine. I can also make tutorials for Blender depending on what you guys want to know about. I also just made the inventory system part 1 and you can watch it for free. If you want to check it out, the link will be in the description. Another thing that I worked really hard on is the asset packs. These are monthly packs voted on by the patrons. They contain one character with base animations and props to use with this character. Asset packs can stack and by investing $5 a month you will get access to all of them. And you can also use it on anything you like. For this month the theme was zombies and this is the character you can use, as well as these props. The link for the patron page will be on the description as well. Now, let's get started with the awesome new things I implemented. The first step I made was to rework the grass system. It looks worse than the old grass, because it's made of planes instead of extra polygons, but the performance will be a lot more manageable. And the main reason for this change was the mechanics I can have from it, thanks to S. Krizel. So S. Krizel is this awesome dude that makes really good plugins in the marketplace, and one of these plugins is the dynamic grass. I can now burn the grass, for example, and cut it using weapons or tools. The system also works in chunks for performance sake, and everything happens on the foliage component. I'm still on the fence about the look of the grass, but if I find a better way to do it and keep the mechanics, I'll do it in the future. Trees are also from the plugin I got, made by S. Krizel, same as the grass. With this plugin, I can create my own tree types with a bunch of customization options. Not only that, but I can also cut these trees using my own code. All I gotta do is detect the tree instance and send a message to it, using interfaces. So, what I did is, I merged my mechanics into that system created by S. Krizel. Things like the drop mechanic I made for the enemies, or tree resistance against weak tools, I can set what sort of loot I want from those trees and what are the chances of dropping it. Now the system works very well and I can expand this a lot in the future. Using the S. Krizel system as a reference, I made my own system for stone and mineral nodes. This is basically a foliage item with a component associated with it. Once it detects a hit incoming from the player, the foliage becomes an actor that will then behave as you would expect. Also, every time you hit a node, there is a chance it is a sleeping elemental in disguise, so you will have to kill it and get extra resources from that. Notice how this elemental is a little bit weird, with floating feet that doesn't really connect with the ground. I'll talk more about that later. This system is also the base, so I'm going to expand a lot more on it in the future with things like Electrium, a mineral idea I had. I wanted to make an Electrium pickaxe to show you other types of pickaxes, but I didn't really have the time for that. One thing I changed because of these foliages was the gathering aspect of the game. Now you can collect mushrooms, break boxes and collect scrap from the world with foliage components. And a lot of these are literally just foliage instances meaning they will be a lot better for performance. Now, let's talk a little bit on how you can collect these foraging items with the tool actors. Using that concept that I showed you guys before with the item structure, I made the tool types of objects. These tools have an associated component into them that will keep track of important animations. I then made custom animations for holding and using each tool. With some rework on the player animation blueprint, I got the system running using animation notifies, and I will be teaching about these tools in tutorials as well. They're basically my line of communication with these foliage instances. 
I also took some time to rework on some old code that I had and um, just make it better. And the drop system got a small rework, nothing that big, but the floating interfaces you see got completely changed. Now they work much more efficiently and look better all around. And I also had to completely remake the enemy AI and the health component. Actually, I had to remake the enemy AI two times. The first one was because I just wanted to work more efficiently, but the second time almost drove me mad. Let me explain. I found the literal worst glitch ever. Every time I tried compiling the game, I would get an error. It was something about a handled ensure, but didn't really give me any location associated, so I couldn't really track it down. After googling about it, I found out it was because of a corrupt variable. Yes, a variable inside any blueprint in the whole project. I got really freaked out when I saw a guy saying that he had to completely remake his project because of this. Or another guy saying he feels sorry for people who can't debug inside the engine with C++. What I did is, I made several backups of the project and I slowly deleted every single file I had, checking if the errors would go down. All the while I had a note by my side to know where the errors were probably coming from. Every time I made it go down from, let's say, 8 to 5 errors, I would make another backup called Checkpoint. If anything went wrong, I could just go back to that checkpoint specifically. Another horrible thing that happened is that if I tried fixing the errors by deleting variables, these errors would go from 8 to 50 or a crazy number like that. Like a scary Hydra. After two weeks of desperation, I got the project compiling again, but that costed my health component and the enemy AI. So yeah, I had to completely remake both from scratch. That is when I noticed how important a backup would have been. I had a look at the GitHub Premium deal and I didn't really look like it could handle a lot of storage. It didn't really look like it was made for backups of games specifically, just for um, systems, you know, that would take less storage space. So that's when I found Arc Backup, also known as the coolest thing ever. Arc Backup makes backups of your project with any given time you want. Then you can restore those backups and revert your project version however you'd like. So my plan now is to compile my game once a week and see if everything is in order. Now it's virtually impossible for me to enter a situation like this one I just got out of, so I highly recommend that you use a service like this. Arc Backup costs $6 a month and lets you store up to 1 terabyte of stuff. And this video is not sponsored, I just really liked it. Now, let's talk a bit about a couple of other things that I made, such as the world clock. This uses the information from the Sky plugin and fires events every hour. Now, it is incredibly easy for me to make any sort of schedule for any NPCs. Also. There's this clock on the top right to tell us which time it is. Another thing that I started having a look on is rain. I had some problems with performance on this, it's really hard to make it look good and keep a low cost in performance, but I'll keep looking for ways to make it better, and during moment to moment gameplay, days will have different attributes to them, like windy, rainy, sunny, this will influence how much it is going to rain on that particular day, all controlled by a new environment manager that I created. This manager is basically a manager for the managers. I have all of the different blueprints from the plugins I got and I have them all inside of this one manager. From there I can control wind and things like that universally, so it's just a lot easier to change any environment variables in bulk. Now. Remember when I talked about how weird it was that stone elemental with all of those weird animations and his feet didn't really connect to the floor and looks like he was sliding a little bit? Well, that's because I'm not using root motion animation for anything in my game. This means that all animation is driven by code. The animations just mimic the actual movement. So it's very hard to make the character not slide on the ground of that. Well, my big idea was to make another mob and try to use root motion animations to make it move, 
just so that I could check it out and see what it's like. That's when I made the deer. You can see that it doesn't slide much, its feet seem to actually touch the ground below it. Here is a comparison from the player. So yeah, it looks night and day, right? And that got me thinking, what if I could make the deer's feet conform to the surface it's on? That's what's called inverse kinematics. And in using that, the movement looks so much better. In order to actually be able to use this, I had some trouble though. The first problem is that Blender does not support skeletons that are good for use in Unreal. The bone structure is just all different, and you can't really make inverse kinematics work on that. The second problem is that Rigify makes it really complicated to export. In case you're wondering, Rigify makes very good rigs without any effort from the user, and it saves a lot of time in general. I found a solution for both problems, and that is with UEFI. UEFI is a script that converts the Rigify skeleton into an Unreal Simplified skeleton. Not only that, but you get to keep all of those cool controllers from Rigify. That makes it a lot easier to animate and you can make a lot of different motions from that instead of just using the normal skeleton. Using that, I was able to make my deer skeleton much simpler in Unreal's eyes. I was able to make inverse kinematics and dynamic feed animations. Check this out. With the old system, the board just floats and rotates towards the player, right? Well, in the new system, I can have the mob actually turn realistically using its body. I could also make it go back a little if you get too close. The advantages of using this are just night and day. So yeah, I think you know what that means, right? Yes, I'm going to remake every single animation I have ever done in this game. Ever. I know it's pretty overwhelming, but just the thought of having really good animations and a good skeleton for the player just make me very happy. Also, I would be able to use animations from the marketplace, since the character would have the same skeleton structure as the epic skeleton. Stuff that is more generic, like swimming, climbing walls or gliding could all be bought from the marketplace, and I would save so much time. I'm also planning on using this plugin called Strider. You know how I had to make like 26 animations just for the character movement in all directions when he is like aiming his gun? Well, now I just need to make two, like one in forward and one backwards, and then the plugin itself would change the feet direction and it would also change the rotation of the, the whole pelvis of the character and that just feels like magic, honestly, I love it. But that is it for this devlog, check out the Discord server to be a part of this community, and also check out the Patreon page if you really want to support this dream of mine while also getting some really cool rewards. You have a wonderful day, I'm Leo, signing off.